I just feel unworthy, you know, just humbled that the Lord would, would trust me with you. And, um, and that's what people don't realize. Many people can preach and people can grab a Bible and, and, and just start going at it. But, um, it's a trust factor. It's a trust factor. Um, and it's, can I trust you with my people? Um, can I trust you to be sensitive, to go through the valleys and the perils, go and sit where they are in their own lives right now and bring comfort to them and bring encouragement to them and, and to help them to know that I haven't forgotten about them. I have not forgotten what I promised. I'm not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. If I spoke it to you, I'm going to make it good. I'm going to do good by you. And that's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying today. I'm going to do good by you. And I'm not going to put you in a position where you're operating in false trust. I hear the Lord saying, you can trust me. You can trust me. You can trust me when you can't trace me. You can trust me. You can trust the fact that I'm always working on your behalf. Always, every single day, I got you on my mind. The scripture said, for the Lord has tattooed me in the palm of his hand, therefore he shall never forget me. That's right. Every time he lifts his own hands, he sees a reflection of your face. And he has not forgotten about you. He can't even wave his own hand without seeing you. That's something right there. That's something right there. He can't even lift his own hands if he desire without seeing you, without having the imprint of who you are. And what it is, he needs to make manifest because he's already done the work. What we're working on now is getting the manifestation freed. Yeah, huh? The work is already done. All of the deals are already set. Everything that God was going to do for you, it's done. All the, de all the decisions that he's going to make, he has made them. Yes, he has. So what we're doing is we're clearing the passageway so that all of those decisions that God have made can now be made manifest in you. They can come to the surface to the point that you can see them and have them and operate in them. Wow. Okay. So yesterday we were talking about, uh, I'm thirsty, leash. With yesterday we were talking about the root. We were talking about the root. And um, let's go to the scripture this is profound and we were talking about yesterday's message when we started referring to the fact that God was giving you the ability to get your power back and how many of you all feel like you've gotten your power back if you feel like you've gotten your power back and that yesterday's message did something for you why don't you just start putting bees up start putting bees up you know you just you know I got my power back I got my mind back I got my thoughts back um, you know it, 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 it's all about me being able to feel who I am. Leash! It's all about me being able to feel um, who I am and, and what it is God wants to do uh, in my life as it relates to the promises of God. When you look at the scripture, the first scripture that I want to deal with today, first scripture that I would like to deal with today, very, very important. I want to ask a question that many people ask. Why has this happened to me? Why am I going through this? And there are particular people that I'm thinking of right now. Um, you know, if anybody that works for me is downstairs, please come up here. Um, there are particular people that I'm thinking about right now. Um, that I've heard their stories and um, I've heard their passion about their lives. And um, they have just said, why is this my life? And why has this happened to me? And why am I going through what I am dealing with? Why am I being confronted with all of these issues? And why does it seem like the next person look like, you know, they get in the breakthroughs and they, you know, they, their, their lives are just, going but every time I turn around it's just something over here and something over there and why does it seem like 
this thing, it has happened to me. And I thought about it, and I really thought about it strong. And a scripture came to mind. And um, when I looked at the scripture, God began to give me revelation about it. And he gave me revelation about it because I told you I would never uh, minister on anything. I would never bring myself to minister on anything that I have not walked through myself. And um, I believe that when you walk out of scripture, you understand the power of the scripture. And so the scripture is no longer just words on a page. Now the scripture is your life and it's the living word of God. It is the word that is alive in me. And so I, I share with somebody today, I said, ministry is not what I have, it's who I am. Uh, I am ministry. I don't do ministry. Ministry is who I am. Every fiber of my being, every part of my life, um, it has encountered ministry uh, because it has encountered misery. And um, when you encounter misery, you encounter the ministry of God. And upon your experience with the ministry of God, uh, out of your misery, then you become a minister of the gospel. Because you got a lot of people that are quoting scriptures and know how to get a tune. I was seeing somebody on Facebook the other day, a young little girl. Anybody can get a tune. They can tune up and they can go. But it is the experience with the scripture that calls you the preacher. Mm -hmm. You can't preach something you don't know. You can't preach something you don't know. And if you don't know it, it's just entertainment. It's not preaching. Um, you can't tell me how to get to California and you've never been. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. And, and so with me, I've always been that why person. You know, you can't just walk up and just hand me a, 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 just a bunch of crock. I got I to gotta know why. You know, why are you saying this? If you say, go and jump off the mountain and it'll make you better, why would it make me better? You know, have you tried it? Would you try to get me to jump off a cliff? Have you ever jumped? You know. Because that's, that's what the question needs to be asked now. You know, have you ever walked through what I've walked through? Have you ever been without money and down to nothing? Yes, I have. Have you ever been abused? Yes, I have. Have you ever been trotted on? Yes, I have. Have you ever lost a parent? Yes, I have. Have you ever lost a sister? Yes, I have. Have you ever been sexually abused? Yes, I have. So, you know, I'm, I keep telling you I'm authentic. Mm -hmm. I'm legal. I'm legal. I'm legal to sit here. And, and, and help you and, and to give you the advice that helped me. So, and I'm unapologetic about any of it, just in case somebody think I am. Uh, because there's no feeling like the feeling that I get every day when I sit here, knowing that I'm talking from a place in my life and I'm not talking to you from my head. I'm not talking to you from scriptures that I remembered. I'm talking to you from my own divine experience that I had with this thing called the gospel. And I know now that it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And it's one that found me in a very dark spot. And when I didn't have anything else, all I had was the word. And, and I can remember when during one of my darkest days right here in this house and many stories I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be telling you my experiences right from the walls of this house. And, um, uh, I remember during one of my darkest seasons, during one of my darkest hours, and um, I got up, and I just got a magic marker, and I began to write the scriptures on the wall of my bedroom. And some people that were here at the house saying, she having a nervous breakdown, and I wasn't. What I was doing was, all I knew is that when the scriptures came up in my spirit, I wrote them on the wall. And when the enemy came in the middle of the night to attack me, I would turn the light on and I would go around the wall and I would quote the scriptures that was on the wall. And to this very day, one of the scriptures that I posted on my headboard of a bed that I had was Isaiah 49. And I tell you, to this very day, every scripture that I wrote on that wall, I've seen the Lord bring it into manifestation. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but he's said my word will forever stand you can't wipe his word out you can't unsay what he said and I don't even know if what I just said make any sense or not but you cannot undo what the Lord has already said 
And God has already spoken a word over many of your lives. And it cannot be undone. And I don't care. And, and, and hear me when I say this to you. And I mean this. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And no, no dart at anybody. But I don't care who don't like your process. I'm not shaken by the process. And I don't care who don't agree with the way the Lord has decided to process you. That's none of nobody's business. God uses people according to their experiences. And when the Lord chooses to take you in a certain route, then who are we to judge the way the Lord decided to bring you to freedom? Who are we to judge your path? And that's why you need to understand what God is doing in your life. You need to understand that God is doing something special and something unique in your life. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? God is doing this and he's doing it this way because there is things that God has in store for you. And there are people that you have to meet. There are people that are going to be brought to deliverance because of you. Are you hearing this? And so when I look at the scripture and I look at all of this, I, I was brought to a scripture that helped process me. And I know that it's going to bless you today. And the scripture said in the book of Daniel, it was in the book of Daniel, and we're going to go there. It changed my life. It absolutely changed my life. The book of Daniel, the fourth chapter, and I believe it is the 23rd verse. The book of Daniel, the fourth chapter, and the 23rd, the 23rd verse. It said, now watch this, people, and, and, and I really need you to, I really need you to pay close attention, because I... I feel like a minister, it's like I can, you all have become so real to me, because I feel like I can touch you. I, I feel like I'm, I'm sitting right in your living room, right at your desk with you. I, it, it's like I, all of me today, I can feel that I am made up today of everybody that's watching. It's almost like everybody's just stuck to my skin. It, it, it's the weirdest feeling, but you know, I, I know what that's all about. I, I know that God is making, um, us a part of each other, a part of the journey. And the scripture said in the Amplified Bible, in that the king saw an angelic watcher, a holy one descending from heaven. And I want to bring you up to date. This was um, King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar, um, I always say this, that when the Lord is ready to transition you to a place of complete power, when he is ready to walk you into your divine promise, there is something that God has to do that, um, what, how can I say it? Out of all of the powers that exist in the world, out of all of uh, the methods of spirituality, because we hear it all the time, you know, uh, Chopka and all the rest of these people that's out here that deal in, in, in spiritualism and people that believe in, in you know, um, the crystal rocks and um, people that believe in lighting candles and, and all of the different methods that people have decided to use outside of the scripture. And, they, and, and, and that becomes their, their religious means of making themselves feel like they are connected to God. But... The one thing about God, um, in order to be directly connected to him, that cannot happen without repentance. Without repentance. And so, if your religion have exiled out the repentance factor, then um, you are having a spiritual encounter with familiar spirits, but you're not having a relationship with God. Okay, I just said that. You're not having a relationship with God. Now... Let me make that plain. For that reason, there will be things that will happen to many of you. And there will be people who will pretend to have your answer. And there will be people that will pretend like, oh, if you try to 
you know, rubbing butter over here, it'll make your spirit feel better. And if you just put some bananas under your tongue, it'll make you feel like you, you know, it, it'll lift your spirit. If you just put lavender on your temples and lay down, it'll make you feel like you're going to relax. I done tried it. I, when I was going through hell, lavender did not relax me. I still wanted to just jump out of a window somewhere. So I'm just going to be right honest with you. I understand about, you know, oils and they make you feel like that. And they may make you a tranquil in the physical, but that lavender cannot reach the depths of where I am really disturbed at. It ain't just my sleep that's disturbed. My whole being is disturbed. My life is disturbed, lady. Don't be giving me no lavender talking about this going to make me feel better. Do you know I'm broke? Do you know I don't have no money? Do you know people talking about me all over the world? Lavender can do that? Uh, look, if lavender can do that, y'all need to shut down everything on TV and don't do nothing but sell lavender. So, you know, I'm a witness. That ain't the truth. So, you know, it, 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 it's good and what it does and it, the smell makes you feel whatever. But when God gets ready to take you to your ultimate place of power, when he gets ready to bring you the promise, there must be chaos in your life. There must be an area, a time frame, and that time frame lasts longer than pe most people. Some people have been going through changes since they was a child. Some people have been going through change for the last six years. Some people have been going through crazy stuff for the last 12 years, for the last 10 years. Some people, since the new year came in, it's been the worst year of their life. Okay, but when there is trouble of that magnitude, then it is the Lord doing one thing. It is him allowing you to become disturbed in a place that nobody can resolve that but him. He will cause the unrest to be in a place in you that nobody and nothing can bring comfort to it. Are you hearing that? And see, that's what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was flying high. He was doing his thing. He was going on about his business. He was handling his business, doing whatever it is he felt like he was big enough to do until the Bible said that he had a dream. And the first dream that he had, the Lord would not allow him to remember it. The second dream he had, he was able to remember it because he was ministered to after the first dream. The first dream, God would not allow him to remember it because, now watch this, he would not allow him to remember it because there was no relationship there. There was no processing of righteousness. He had not come to a place where he was ready to follow after God. And so the Lord allowed him to be disturbed to the point that nobody could figure it out. I mean, he called on the, 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 the soothsayers. He called on the, on the enchanters. He called on the wizards. He called on the astrologers. He called on the astrologers, but this was not an earthly problem. He called on the enchanters. And the enchanters need movement in order for them to be able to determine what's going on with you. You know, they'll say, oh, you, you smiling, so that means this, or oh, you this. He couldn't give them a, a, a physical or emotional reaction because he did not know the dream. All he know is that God left him disturbed. And that's how we are sometimes. We'll walk around and it, it, it'll, it'll just be like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just feel disturbed. I don't have a peace of mind. And it seemed like I, I go to church and I get a temporary release and the choir was singing. I would cry. When I come back home, I feel the same way. And it is because it is God's turn. It is God's turn to interpret for you what it is he's about to do for you. It is God's turn. For you to have the kind of relationship with him that when you come through this thing, you're going to be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord, not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother, not my friends, not my prayer partner. There comes a time when it has to be only between you and God. And the Lord would allow you to become disturbed about it. And your disturbance will come when God is looking for you to receive that answer from a divine place. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. Are you hearing that? So the Bible said here that there was a holy watchman. Somebody that had spiritual divine vision. That came from heaven. And this is what they said. They said cut the tree down and destroy it, but leave the stump with its roots in the earth. 
but with a band of iron and bronze around it in the new grass of the field. And let him be wet with the dew of heaven. And let him feed with the beast of the field until seven periods of time pass over him. Now, you may say, well, Dr. Bynum, what does that mean? There was a watchman, a holy watchman that came from heaven, and it came with the word of the Lord saying, cut it down. And some of you all are feeling like, you know, my life has just been, it just seemed like it, everything just hitting the ground, or I can't seem to get it off the ground. But he said one word here that really, um, uh, it said, that really got me when he said, cut down the tree, but leave the roots intact. In other words, don't touch the root of the tree, but cut the tree down. Make a long story short, why did God have them to do that? Well, the Lord brought this scripture to me, and this scripture was for me. And now I'm sharing it to you because he processed me through the scripture. He said, there were times when I give you visions and I give you dreams and I give you things that I desire you to do. And as time go on, you allow other people to come in and all of a sudden the vision start going in a direction that God didn't send it in. All of a sudden it start growing branches that the Lord did not intend for it to have. All of a sudden you start connecting with people that God never intended for you to connect to. You start uh, doing things because they were good ideas, but they were not God's ideas. The scripture said, that which the Lord has not planted shall be cut down. He will not permit it to grow. But what is the root? The root is the Bible said that it will be the root that will come out of Jesse. That the world would bow down to, which was Jesus. Which means the root of the thing, the root of his dream was the word of God. It was the original prophecy that God spoke over your life. It's the original word that God gave. And that's why he said, cut the tree down, but save the root. And that's why God is not bugging out. He's not freaking out because it looks like your life is going all different kinds of ways. Because the Lord knows that the prophecy that he has placed over your life, the root is still intact. And as long as the root is there, the prophecy is still there. And yes, he got to cut down some stuff. He got to prune some stuff. But the Lord is not in the process of letting the devil destroy you. This is not even about the devil. Even he is being used so that God can get rid of the branches that the Lord never intended to grow. Because in the future, God is going to regrow you again. But this time, he's going to regrow you according to the original prophecy. Now, somebody need to say something right there because I feel a like dance coming on in my feet. Good Lord, have mercy. And we're, we're crying because we're fretting. Because we think it's all bad. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's the greatest thing that could have ever happened to you. Somebody said, well, you don't know what's going to happen to me. It's the greatest thing that could have ever happened to you. Because it is in that experience that you're understanding that the Lord is not going to allow anybody to prosper off of you. God is not going to let anybody prostitute you. God is not going to allow anything to grow off of your strength that will not in the future bring you a profit according to the prophecy. Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And so then he has to permit the enemy to cut it down. He has to permit the destruction. He has to permit everything to be wiped out to nothing so that he can grow it again. Oh, somebody need to say, he growing me again. You need to say that today. He growing me again. And that's why the Bible tells us in the book of Hosea, the ninth chapter and the 16th verse. He said, Ephraim is stricken. Their roots dry up. They will bear no fruit. Even though they give birth, I will slay the precious children of their womb. He said, if you don't do it my way. If you don't allow me to grow you in the way of the prophecy. If you start branching out trying to do good things that God didn't say, then you will force God to have to dry it up. And that's why everything you try to produce, nothing prospers. Good Lord have mercy. Because God can only prosper what is in the root. You cannot plant a rose tree and grow oranges. I just said something right there. 
You cannot plant an apple tree and get grapes. That doesn't work. So when God has planted in you that you're supposed to be prosperous and you're supposed to be a multimillionaire, he's not going to let you selling lemonade on the corner prosper because that's not a part of the prophecy. He can only produce out of you what he has planted in you. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. And that's why I was telling y'all about all the stuff that you see going on. It's a spiritual thing. Because the scripture even tells us in Amos, in Amos, um, I believe it's Amos, the fifth chapter, in the 29th verse. It said, and the Amorites grew tall like cedar trees. And they were strong like oak trees. But yet, what happened to them? He said, I destroyed their fruit above. And I destroyed their roots below. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. When God gets ready to deal with things, it's the root of the matter. It's the root of the thing. You got to let him go to the root of the thing. And that's why when he spoke a word over your life, the prophecy is intact. Your life is intact. It ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Oh my God. Everything he does, it is the Lord allowing. It's what God permits. And I promise you, if the Lord is permitting the enemy to do anything in your life right now, it is to your benefit. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. I know what I'm talking about. It is just, you don't see it right now. You don't see it right now. You don't see it right now. You said you, you saying, Dr. Biden, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know about that. No, 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 no. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. That's why you you got you gotta switch yourself today. You gotta start praising God. I'm sorry. You got to start giving God glory. You got to start giving God glory for all of it. For everything you lost, for everybody that walked away from it, for everybody that talked about you, for all the pain, for all the hurt. I'm talking to a whole bunch of people today. You got to say, okay, God, I give. I give because I know you know what you're doing. I give because something was growing out of me the wrong way. And guess what? Guess what happens when something comes out of you that the Lord did not intend it? The branches fall off because God can't give life to what he did not plant. You want God to give life to something over here you don't put up, but that's not coming from the root. Are you hearing that? Let me tell you what happens here. Let me tell you what happens here when he says in the book of Matthew, Matthew 13, 13 and 6. Matthew 13 and 6. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. In Matthew 13, matter of fact, go, go to 5, 5 and 6. Five and six. I want you to see this. Matthew five and six says, and he was talking about, you know, the seeds being planted. Yes, Lord, I just heard you. He said, go on to 13 period, because this right here is a foundation of what he's trying to say to, to, to all of us. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? You all right. You all right. Stop shaking. You all right. You all right. God had to get rid of all that stuff, all that decayed stuff, stuff that he didn't tell you to do. Stuff. Mm -mm. He don't want you to have partial successes. Are you hearing me? God do not, he do not want you to have a partial success. He do not want you to have temporary blessings. He said he was going to set you over in a lifestyle of prosperity, which means I'm going to prosper always, not just sometimes. Are you hearing this? He's delivering you from a temporary fix. That's really what's going on. He said here, um, I love this scripture. It said, in the third verse, he told them many things in parables saying, listen carefully. Put this over here so you can see me. He said, listen carefully. A sower went out to sow seed in his field. And as he sowed some seed, fell beside the road between the fields and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And at once they sprang up because they had no depth in the soil. And that's what you got to you gotta be careful. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something right here. You got to be careful because whenever you bring yourself to a point where you want a quick fix and you want something to hurry up, hurry up and happen, it ain't going to last. It ain't going to last. There's no longevity in it because it has no depth in it. Are you hearing this? And that becomes the trick of the enemy. The trick of the enemy is this instantaneous spirit. Because we're in the microwave age. We want it all quick. But you want to grow this thing the right way. 
You want to grow your wealth the right way. The scripture said, any man that obtained wealth and he do it without integrity, he will not keep it. It will not last. You want depth in what you're doing. You want history in what you're doing. You want people to be able to trace your steps as to how you got to where you are. Are you hearing me? Nothing just pops up and happens. Even that which is birthed out of wickedness, it had a wicked journey. Are you hearing God today? My God, I feel this. I feel this so strong. And he said, the reason why it sprang up quickly is because it hit a little bit of soil. It hit just enough that was able to give it some life, but it didn't have enough to give it longevity. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Good Lord have mercy. What did he say then? He said this, but when, listen, it didn't have any depth, but when the sun rose, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. So what is it that will cause you to be wiped out before you can get the promise when there is no root in what you're doing? When you cannot go back and trace where you got it from. When you can't go back and say, God did this. The Lord told me this. God called me to do this. God planted this in me. And why do you think that that's the reason why things will begin to grow? And no matter what you're going through, why do you think that in your worst hour you can't give up? Why do you think that even times when you say, I'm walking away from God and I don't want to hear nothing about no God and no nothing else. And you just driving along in your car and all of a sudden you start saying, thank you, Jesus. Why do you think you can't give up? Why do you think when you throw your hands up, you keep on coming back to God? Why do you think you can't let it go? Because the root is the one that is in control. Good Lord have mercy. Jesus, that was something right there. The Bible tells us that. It says, how long will you let uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar stay out there in the field? And the scripture said, he has to stay out there until he comes to understand that it is heaven that rules. Are you hearing me? That the rules come from heaven. That the control comes from heaven. The control comes from the roots. The control doesn't come from man. The control doesn't come by what they think. Because too many of you all got your sight locked right here. Do you know how many people in the world there is? I don't care if you live in Texas. If you live in Texas, you got a Texas faith. You got a Detroit faith. You got a California faith. You got a, you got a Mississippi faith. But God's faith is all over the world. And if God can't call nobody to bless you in California, he will go on the other side of the universe. God is in control of it all. And if he looks all over the world, and can't, this is what he told me one day. He said, what I have rooted in you, Juanita Bynum, if I can't get nobody on the earth realm to bless you, I will put clothes on angels. But I will not be found being a God of my word. Are you hearing me? God is going to do what he said he's going to do in your life if he got to put clothes on angels. And I'm telling you, it's being done every day. I get testimonies all the time of people that walked in banks and got loans. And when they went back to tell the man, thank you, the people said, that's our paperwork. But don't nobody here work here by that name. I'm here to tell you that you got to raise your level of faith and your trust has got to be in your roots. Your trust got to be in and what God has put in you. Your trust has got to be in the fact that I've been rooted and I've been grounded and no devil in hell can take my destiny because my roots are still there. Somebody need to say that today. My roots are still there. My leaves may look a little funny. My leaves may look like they're withering. My leaves may look like nobody's paying me any attention. My leaves may not look as prosperous and as big as somebody else's. But just give me some time. Because you're going to look up and you're going to see the manifestation of what's been rooted and grounded in me. Because the Bible said, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. And whatsoever you do, it is going to prosper. 
prosper. And today, I decree it over your life. You are about to prosper. I can feel it right now. You are about to break out on every side. You are about to break out in the north and the south and the east and the west and nothing. There is no force that can stop you. You come in full steam ahead and anything that gets in your way after this, you're going to drive it right down because you're coming forth from your roots and not from your emotions. Are you hearing God today? Oh, somebody need to put some hearts up there on that one. Somebody need to put some hearts up there on that one. Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm coming forth by my roots. It's what's in me. It's not what you bring to me. You can only bring to me what's being made manifest from within me. This is a root work, baby. This is not, this right here is not the work of the flesh. This right here is not the work of a carnal mind. This right here is not the work of a man's mind. No, nobody thought of this. You're not doing me a favor. You're answering the call of my roots. All that is about to happen for you, they are about to say yes to your roots. Lord Jesus, do you not know there are people tied to your roots? There are cities that are tied to your roots. There are countries that are tied to your roots. Somebody's watching me. Your blessing ain't coming from America. Your blessing ain't coming from America. Somebody's blessing is coming from Dubai. Somebody's blessing is coming from Africa. Somebody's blessing is coming from China. That's right, I said China. I keep telling you God rules. Good Lord, have mercy. I keep telling you that God is in control. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I keep telling you that he is on the throne. I keep telling you that it was his hand that went into the dirt of your life. In the dirt of your life. And that's what I want to help you with today. My God from Zion. He he needs dirt. All roots need dirt. So if you sitting here trying to be self-righteous and pretend like you ain't never done nothing wrong and you ain't never made a mistake and you ain't never fell by the wayside, I can tell you ain't nothing coming out of you because roots need dirt and it's the dirt that crushes the seed, that puts the pressure on the seed until the outer shell breaks and when the outer shell breaks, then the seed begin to produce the fruit. Are you hearing me? That's why you gotta thank God for everything you've been through. Everything you've been through was a pressure that God needed to birth you out and to put your fruit on top of the earth ram. You're rooted in it. Oh yeah, you're coming out of this. You need to put some stars up there. You need to put something up there because I feel this. And that's why the Bible said, let me go to something for you right quick. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah, good Lord, I love this scripture. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, the 17th chapter and the eighth verse. I love this. I love this. Are you here? Are you here? And this is what it says. It's got your name on it. This got your name on it. It said, for he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters. Now, this is the Amplified Bible. Watch how it reads. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters. And you will be what? And you will be what? You will be. You got to say it. I will be nourished. I will not be malnutrition in the spirit. I will be nourished. I will be nourished because I am planted by the waters. I get my nourishment from the waters. What is waters? I get my nourishment from the spirit of God. I get my nourishment from the waters that run down from heaven. Because the only thing that can cause these roots to live is a water from, from a divine place. Not nothing from a natural place. Because the natural thing did not put it there. Are you hearing me? Ain't nothing worse than trying to get water for something that's divine from a carnal place. Okay. He said, waters that spread out its roots by the river, which means a flowing stream. I'm rooted. My roots is by a flowing stream. I'm not sitting in still water. Good Lord have mercy. Did you hear that? I'm not sitting in still water. You're not in still waters. You're by the river. There's movement going on. There's an undercurrent that is going on. Are you hearing that? There is movement right now. You know what? I, I really, listen, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I got to go and find this right here. 
I want you to say it right now. There is movement going on. There is movement happening right now. Do y'all hear me? Is anybody listening? Y'all don't know what I feel like right now. Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm going in on myself. There's movement. Whew. There's movement. I keep hearing it. There's movement. Whew. Give me a minute. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. There's movement. There's movement. There is movement. There is movement that is happening right now. I have to find this, y'all. I, I just, I just, I just had to find this. I just had to find this. Oh, God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. There is movement. Something is happening in the spirit right now. Right now, right now, you, I know this sounds crazy, but you got, you got to get up. You got to get up and just stop praising God because something is happening in the spirit right now, right this very minute, that which was stagnated is moving. That which was stuck is moving. A current just went out in the earth realm just now. I feel it in the, my God, my God, a current just went out right, hey, a current just went out right now. Wherever you are, you got to get up and start walking. You get your phone in your hand and just take two or three steps. There is a wave and a shift that just went out in the spirit realm. And God said what was stuck have now been unleashed. There, The waters is causing the roots to be shaken and brought to life. My God, you got to start walking. Lord, I feel this. I feel this. I feel this. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I hear what God is saying. There is movement. There is movement taking place right now. There is movement taking place right now. There is movement. There is movement. You got to give him praise right now. There is movement. There is movement. There is movement in the spirit. Are you, are you hearing that? Lord Jesus, mm -mm, we got to wait. We got to wait. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Because he said there's movement. I can't do anything. There's movement. There is movement. There is movement. There is movement. There is movement. I got to wait. I got to wait. I got to wait right here. There is movement. There is movement in the spirit right now. I feel it in the name of Jesus. I feel it in the name of Jesus. And this is how it happens. Something supernatural happens that we cannot control. Something happens in the spirit realm at a moment's time. And that's how we miss it. We miss it because we don't understand the movement of the spirit. We don't understand that God would speak something and then he would break something. And at that moment, you got 60 seconds to step in and say, God, I give you praise right now. Because there is movement in my spirit. Is there anybody in here that I'm talking to? Lord Jesus. God, I feel this. God, I feel this. I feel this. I feel this. I feel this. Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Good Lord, have mercy. I will not miss this moment. 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 Somebody give God a praise right now. Somebody give God a praise right now. Somebody give God a praise. Oh, my God. Oh, you better bless him. I said praise him. I'm telling y'all something. Hey, something that hit the earth realm today. What's your name on? There's a shift in the spirit. God, I'm going to shut. Thank you, God. It's time for you to dance. Because your victory is here. Are you hearing me? You got to move something on your body today because God is 
That just took me out. That just took me out. I felt that. I felt that. I felt that. I felt that. Something moved. Something moved.
telling you. I'm telling you. I can't even describe to you what I just felt. But all I know is that today the devil has been made a liar. You still got your roots. You still got your roots. Your roots are still there. I don't care what is going on. Ain't nothing wrong with your roots. They in a place that can't be touched by man. They in a place that can't be touched by circumstances. This too shall pass. Trust me when I tell you. Oh, just lift your hands up right now. You are a gift of God. There's something rooted and grounded in you. I want to make all of these announcements, but I just... I can't, I just feel full right now. Just want you to know that um, you can now get all of these teachings on MP3. Just go to my website. I've allowed them to make all of the programs since July 2nd on MP3s for you to listen to in your cars and your homes. forget to get your book. We're praying for the third dimension. I feel the weight of the glory of God today, people. That word took some virtue out of me. I don't know who I was preaching to today, but you rooted and grounded in God, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper ever. It will be formed, but it will never prosper. Because the weapon is hitting at something that it can see. It doesn't have the power to hit at something that's hidden in Christ Jesus. And that's why the Bible said, when you're rooted in him, when the heat comes in Jeremiah 17 and 8, you will not be anxious. You won't be anxious. And in the year of the drought, you won't stop bearing fruit. That's what it said. I tell people all the time, I believe in my roots to the degree that if bread go to $100 a loaf, I'm going to still eat it. If chicken go to $1,000 a chicken, if that's what I want to eat, God going to let me eat it. Because I'm rooted in him. In the year of the drought, I will not fear and I will still bear fruit. And when the heat comes, I will be anxious for nothing. I'm telling you something shifted in the spirit. Something shifted in you today and you are going to see it. In less than 24 hours, you're going to know that a change happened in me. I don't care if you weren't able to do nothing but move one finger. If you made a movement, when I said move, you're about to see your God. You're about to see him strong and mighty in your life. I don't think you... I could probably never get you to understand what happened today. And some of you that are watching it are not used to this. And you don't even know what I'm doing. You don't even know what happened. But I just know it just felt like a beam came down over me and paralyzed me. And I just felt something go like, like it went through my stomach, came in my side, like, and God said, I just, I just sent 
a shift and a wave in the waters of the spirit. And I've just stimulated the roots. Watch your leaves. Watch your leaves. Watch your leaves in less than 24 hours. Watch your leaves. Watch what start happening in your spirit. Watch what starts to happen in you. Watch what you start to feel like. No weapon formed against you. 